welcome to our video. In this video, we are going to study our Connect Plus units and we are going to start with, of course, unit number seven. And this unit is called, Where are the families? And in this unit, of course, we are going to talk about, obviously, families. Let's start. Here we have Stephen's family. So we are going to get to know to his family members. Family members means the people in his family. We have, of course, Stephen. Stephen has a grandfather and a grandmother. Then he has a father and a mother. And from his father and mother, we can get his uncle and aunt. His uncle he can be his father or his mother's brother. And his aunt could be his father or his mother's sister. And, of course, his uncle and his aunt has children. And these children, we are going to call them cousins. And, of course, Stephen has a brother and a sister. Now, let's get to our important vocabulary of the unit. Please repeat after me the first word, niece. 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 Niece is my sister or my brother's daughter. Next word, nephew. 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 Nephew is my brother's or my sister's son. Okay, so niece is a girl, nephew is a boy. Next word, cousin, cousin, cousin. And as we said before, cousin is the son or daughter for, of my uncle or aunt. Next word, baby, baby, baby. Baby is a little newborn baby. Then we have toddler, toddler, toddler. A toddler is older than a baby, but he is still a little tiny child, like from one year to three years old. Next word, child, child, child. A child is like you guys, from like four years old till ten or eleven years old. Then we have a teenager, teenager, teenager. A teenager is a person from 13 to 20 years old. Then we have adult. 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 Adult is an older person like your teacher, your father, your mother, and all the older people in your life. Last word, elderly people. Elderly people. Elderly people. Elderly people like, are older people like your grandparents. And now let's take a look at our grammar lessons for the unit. And the first lesson we have is the present simple tense. And we use the present simple tense to talk about fact. Facts means things that happen in nature, things that we do not change, things that are natural. And we also use it to talk about our daily habits or daily routine, things that we do every day. We are used to do it. We do not change it. We do it daily. Let's now look at the examples and from the examples we are going to learn the form of the present simple tense. And the first example we have, it rains in winter. It rains in winter. It is a singular subject so we add an S at the end of the verb and we also can add ES or IES according to the verb. And, of course, here we are going to use the present simple tense because, of course, it only rains in winter. It doesn't rain in summer, of course. Another example, I brush my teeth every morning. I brush my teeth every morning. Here we use the subject I. So we are going to add the verb in infinitive and we also add the verb in infinitive if the subject is from the plural subject like we, you, and they. And then the rest of the sentence. Here in this sentence we are talking about our daily routine or our daily habit and of course we brush our teeth every morning and every night. Now let's take a look at the negative form, here we have in this example, she doesn't like coffee. She doesn't like coffee. So here if you are talking about the singular subject, we add doesn't after the subject, then we add the verb in infinitive. We delete or remove the S or ES or IES. So we say she doesn't like coffee. Another example, if we are talking using the 
plural subject like we here, we don't go to school on Friday. We do not or we don't go to school on Friday. So we add don't after the subject and then we of course add the verb in infinitive form. So we do not go to school on Friday. Now let's take a look at the question. Let's start with the yes or no question. So we are going to start our question using here does, of course, for the singular subject like he or she or it. So the question here says, does she help her sister? Does she help her sister? Of course, because that's a question. So the verb is going to be in the infinitive form. And the answer is going to be yes, she does or no, she doesn't. No, she doesn't because this answer is negative. So we say no, she doesn't. Another question here, do you play football? Do you play football? The answer is going to be yes, I do or no, I don't. Now let's take a look at the WH question. Here we have a question say, how do you go to school? How do you go to school? The answer is going to be I go to school by bus. And of course, if this question was using a singular subject like he or she or it so it's going to be how does she go to school and the answer is going to be she goes we add the es to the verb she goes goes to school by bus and now let's look at our second grammar lesson the present continuous tense and we use this tense to express an action or to tell something that is happening at the moment as we speak now let's look at the examples to get the form of this tense. And the first example we have, I am studying English now. Another example, she is watching TV at the moment. Another, another example, they are playing video games. And from these three examples, we are going to get the, the form of the affirmative sentence for this tense. We have the subject. I, she, and they, plus verb to be, am, is, and are, plus, of course, the verb plus I and D. Now, let's look at the negative form. Here we have the example says, he isn't reading a new book. He isn't reading a new book. Another example, we aren't going to the club today. These examples are in negative, so we add not to the verb to be, and the verb stays with the ing. Now let's look at the yes or no question, and of course the question is going to start with R if the subject subject is a plural subject, or is, is if it's a singular subject. Here we have a plural subject, so the question say, are you talking on the phone? And the answer is going to be, of course, yes, I am or no, I am not. Yes, I am or no, I am not. Let's look at another question. Is he listening to music? The answer is going to be, of course, yes, he is or no, he isn't. Here, the verb stays always with I and G. Now let's look at the WH question. Of course, we're going to start the question with the WH word. What, then verb to be, am or is or are, then the subject, then the verb in ing. What are you doing? And the answer is going to be, I am writing a paragraph for my English class. And now let's take a look at our third lesson for this unit. And this lesson is the past simple tense. And we already know that we use the past simple tense to talk about an action that happened in the past and finished. It's not happening now. It's not happening anymore. It's finished. Now let's look at the examples to get the form of the tense. And here our first example. He visited his friend yesterday. Is he still at his friend? Of course not. Of course he's at home maybe or at school or at work or so ever. But what we want to get from this example that he visited his friend yesterday and he is no longer with him. So here we have the subject and then we have the verb in its past form, the verb plus ed. And we also can add d or ied according to the ending of the verb. Like here in this example, we played football last week. We played 
football last week. I need you here to notice something, guys. Here, the verb ends with Y, the letter Y, but before the Y, there is a vowel letter A. Okay, so what we're going to do here, we are going to keep the Y and add ED only. But like, look here at this other example. She studied English two hours ago. Studied here is the past form of the verb study. Study ends with Y, but the letter before the Y is D. It's not a vowel letter, it's a consonant letter. So what we did here that we deleted, we cancelled the Y and we added IED. So here the past form of the verb study, we say she studied English two hours ago. And of course, in the past symbol, we already know there are good verbs and bad verbs. Good verbs are verbs that follow the rule that takes ED or D or IED. And the bad verbs, the irregular verbs that they change the whole verb. Like here in this example, I made a surprise for my sister last night. Made here is the past form for the verb make. We change it the whole verb. Another irregular verbs or bad verbs that do not follow the rule like eat becomes ate, do becomes did, wake becomes walk, uh, come came, take talk, and a lot of other verbs. I'm sure you have memorized it before. Now let's take a look at the negative form of the tense. Here we have you didn't finish your lunch. You didn't finish your lunch. So here we have the subject, you. And then we add the negative form, didn't. And then we add the verb in infinitive. We add the verb in infinitive. Even if it was an irregular verb, we change it back to its infinitive, ver infinitive form. Sorry. So it becomes you didn't finish your lunch. Now let's take a look at the yes or no question. Here we have the question says, did you do your homework? Did you do your homework? The, the answer is going to be, of course, yes, I did, or no, I didn't. Now let's check the WH question. Here we have, where did you go on the weekend? Where did you go on the weekend? The answer is going to be, I went to the cinema with my family. Of course, we already know that go is a bad verb, an irregular verb, so we change the whole verb. And the past of go is went, so the answer is going to be I went, the verb in the past form, to the cinema with my family. Also, in the past simple tense, we have the verb of verb to be. Am is are, we change it into past. We have am and is, we change it to was. And are we change it to where? Like here in this example, the first example we have, I was very excited yesterday. I was very excited yesterday. Here, this sentence expressed my emotions and my feelings, but in the past, yesterday. Okay, another example. They knew about the party. They knew, the past of no, they knew about the party and they weren't surprised. For our fourth lesson, we are going to talk about the present perfect tense and we use this tense to talk about an action that started in the past but continued up to the present. That means that we can still see its result in the present as we speak or as we are talking. And we also use the present perfect tense to talk about an action or something that happened in the past, but we do not know when exactly. We do not know the time of the action. And now let's take a look at our example to get the form of the tense. And for our first example, here we have, he has played football. He has played football. So, of course, we have the subject, he, and with he, we add a helping verb. This helping verb here for singular subject like he or she or it, we use has. We use has. And after has, we add the verb in the past participle form. And we are going to learn what's the past participle form later after we finish this lesson. 
let's look at another example we have been shopping we have been shopping here because this is a plural subject we used have in a state of has so we use has after he or she or it and we use have after we they you and i and of course after have we add the past participle tense form sorry the past participle form of the verb so we have been shopping and the negative form of this tense the game hasn't finished yet the game hasn't finished yet the game it or the subject it then the helping verb has or have but in the negative form hasn't and then the verb in the past participle form another example they haven't traveled to Aswan for three years now let's take a look at the yes or no question the question here starts with have have you done your chores have you done your chores and the answer was going to be yes i have or no i haven't and here if the subject was a singular subject like he or she or it of course the question is going to start with has like has she done her chores and the answer is going to be yes she has or no she hasn't now let's take a look at the wh question here we have where has she gone where has she gone that means that she went in the past but she is still there she didn't come back so it's an action that happened in the past but it wasn't finished the answer is going to be she has gone to her friend's house and now let's get to know the past participle form of the verb and we have already know guys that the verb is an action that we can do like eat run jump walk talk speak sleep and so on and we have already studied before the present and the past form of the verb these forms we that we are familiar with the present form of the verb that we call the infinitive form that we use in the present simple or in the present continuous or in any present tense and the past tense the past simple tense we use the past form of the verb for it and here we have the past participle or the bb we use it when we are talking or is using the present or the past perfect tense and these verbs guys we are going to memorize them of course these are not all the verbs these are just a couple of verbs for you to read and the rest of the verbs you can check it online let's just read a couple of a couple of sorry a couple of verbs here the verse the first verb here we have run run is the present form of the verb the past is ran and the past participle is also run so run ran run another verb like speak here we have the present form speak the past spoke and the past participle spoken so speak spoke spoken and a lot of other verbs that you need to memorize them and you can check the rest of the verbs online for the last grammar lesson in this unit we are going to learn about the rule of used to why do we use used to in the sentence we use it to speak or to express about a habit that we did in the past when we were little or kids and we do not do it anymore like another example it was a routine or a daily thing in the past for us but now it's not we're going to learn it looking at the examples and here in the first example we have she used to play basketball when she was little that means when she was little when she was a baby or a child or a kid she used to play basketball but now she don't so it was a habit for her in the past and now it's not here let's look at the sentence we have the subject she then use the to use to okay then the verb in infinitive the verb in its infinitive form we do not add anything to the verb another example we used to visit our grandparents every weekend like every weekend we went to visit our grandparents but now as we are older we do not do it anymore so it was a routine or a habit thing in the past 
it happened in the past and we do not do it anymore. We, the subject, then used to, then visit the verb in infinitive, then the rest of the sentence. Now let's take a look at the negative form of this sentence. Here we have, he didn't use to wake up early. See here, guys, here we have the subject, then the negative didn't, because of course used to here is in the past. Then we put it in the infinitive, not in the past. So we say he didn't use to. And of course, the verb is going to remain in infinitive, wake up early. He didn't use to wake up early. And here we have the yes or no question. Of course, it's going to start with did. So did you use to? Of course, it's a question, so it's going to be in infinitive. Did you use to run every morning? Did you use to run every morning? And the answer is going to be yes, I did or no. I didn't. Now the WH question here how how did you use to go to school? How the WH word did the because it's past use the subject then used to then the verb in infinitive go then the rest of the question to school. And the answer is going to be I uh, used to go to school by bike. At the end of our unit, we are going to learn our phonetic sounds. Like here, we have the sound of the letters U and E. Like in the word argue, tissue, cruel, glue, blue, clue, statue, rescue, and a lot of other words. And we also are going to learn about the sounds of the letters U and E, but with another letter between them, like the word cube or flute or june or perfume or fumes and a lot of other words and the sounds of the letters e and w like here we have the word flu or flu crew you few and of course the word from our unit nephews and two Thank you so much guys for listening. I hope you enjoyed the unit and you've learned a lot of things. Thank you so much. Unit 8 at the museum. Now let's check our important vocabulary for this unit. And the first vocab we have, sculpture. To sculpture means to make statue. Next word, artifact. An artifact is an object made by humans to express a culture or a history. Next word, statue. Statue like the Statue of Liberty. Next word, tool. A tool is an equipment or something we use to fix or sometimes break things, like a hammer or a screwdriver. Next word, clay. Clay is a substance made out of mud. We use it to make pottery. Pottery means like plates and glasses. Next word, necklace. Necklace. Necklace is something that we can wear around our neck. Next word, bracelet. Bracelet is also an accessory that women can wear around their arms. Next word, jewelry. Jewelry. Jewelries are like necklaces, bracelets, earrings, rings, and a lot of other accessories that women can wear. Last word, portrait. A portrait is a drawing of a person or natural scenes that we can hang on the wall. For the grammar lesson for this unit, we are going to learn about countable and uncountable nouns. But first, let's remember what are nouns. Nouns are names of things like people, things, food or places or whatsoever. So nouns are names. Now let's learn about the countable nouns. Nouns that we can count separately like one, two, three. Countable nouns here have a singular and plural form. Plural form means that we can add S at the end of the noun to make it plural. Like here the word egg, we can add S to it and we can say eggs, plural. And we can count it like by one separately. We can say I have an egg, one egg, or we can also say I have two eggs, three eggs, and so on. Also the word apple, the word orange, the word cookie. 
we can say I need or I have one cookie or we can also say I have two cookies three cookies we can add it in a plural for and also the countable nouns can have a an or any number before them because we can count them like here the example I have a cat and two dogs these of course are not all of the countable nouns the countable nouns you are going to learn them by practice and by answering a lot of questions now let's learn about the uncountable nouns is there anything that we cannot count of course they are there are some nouns that we cannot count separately like one two three like here we have the word water can you count water can you count any liquid of course not like can i tell you give me two waters or three waters of course not you can give me a bottle of water or a glass of water so what we are counting here we are counting the bottle or the glass itself we are not counting the water inside and this goes for any liquid like juice or milk count of uncountable nouns these nouns have no plural form mean we cannot add s at the end of the noun like the word bread we cannot count bread we cannot say breads or juice we cannot say juices or meat we cannot say meats these nouns are uncountable actually to count bread we need to say a loaf of bread so like the water here i'm counting the loaf not the bread itself and it also can go for a sugar flour or salt can i tell you can you give me one sugar or two sugars no i tell you or i ask you for a spoon of sugar or a spoon of salt so i'm counting the spoon i'm not counting the sugar itself it's very hard to count sugar and also uncountable nouns usually can't have of course a an or any number before them like here our example i will buy cheese sugar and rice i didn't tell you how many cheese or sugar or rice because i can count these nouns separately and and i need you to notice something here there are a lot of nouns that can be countable and uncountable and but it differentiates in the meaning of the sentence and as i said before you are going to learn this by practicing all right here we are going to learn when to add a and some and any we add a and an for singular countable nouns I need you to focus with me here so we use a and an before singular countable nouns like there is a bottle on the table of course a bottle i can count a bottle so we say there is a bottle on the table or there there is a chair beside the table we of course we can count chairs it's a countable noun and we also use an for singular countable nouns like there is an apple on the table but we use some and any for plural countable nouns or uncountable nouns so we use some and any for plural countable nouns and uncountable nouns like there is some cheese in the fridge there is some cheese in the fridge or we can say there are some apples on the table there are some apples on the table so apples yes they are countable nouns but here apples are plural we said apples so we used some and in the first example there is some cheese in the fridge because cheese is uncountable noun so we used some and we all know that from before that we use some for the affirmative sentence and any for the negative and the question unless the question is an offer or a request so we can also use some in the question as we can see here like in the negative there isn't 
any cheese in the fridge. There isn't any cheese in the fridge. Or we can also say there aren't any apples on the table. There aren't any apples on the table. And for the question here, is there any cheese in the fridge? Is there any cheese in the fridge? Okay, but if I'm asking you in a polite way, like an off, uh, like a request, or I'm offering you something, we can use some in a question like, would you like some sugar? Would you like some water? Would you like some chocolate? Here I'm offering in a polite way, so we here is the only exception where we can use some in a question. But in any other question, of course, we are going to use any. At the end of our unit, we are going to learn about our new phonetic sounds. Here we have the sounds of the letters T, U, R, and E, like in the word future, nature, capture, picture, and a lot of other words. And the sounds of the letters S, U, R, and E, like the word measure, treasure, Pleasure, ledger, they are super easy. And thank you so much, guys, for listening to our video. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned a lot. I hope you enjoyed this year all alone. And I'm sure I have enjoyed it so much. I love you so much, guys. Thank you for this amazing year. And see you next year. Bye.